For years now, I've been noticing this neat line of faint stars in my wide angle images, but I'd never really given it much attention. And it turns out to be an asterism known as Kemble's Cascade. So I thought during this lockdown, it would be a nice easy target to shoot from my backyard. And it's found in a constellation known as Camelopardalis, which is a new constellation to me. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to learn some new stuff and share the experience in a vlog. So in today's video, let's photograph Kimball's Cascade. Alright guys, I'm going to do a little bit of planning in Stellarium before I head out into the garden. And before I do that, I want to give you a message from the sponsors of today's video, NordVPN. Now, I've been using NordVPN for a little bit over two years now. The reason I started using NordVPN was just over two years ago when I was in Turkey. The Turkish government censors a lot of the internet, so even Wikipedia was blocked. So I would use a VPN service to pretend that my internet connection was coming from a different country, and that way I could access all of the blocked websites. So NordVPN has over 5,500 servers all around the world. And for example, you can pretend that you're in the US and have access to shows that are only available on Netflix in the US. And there's way more to a VPN service than just pretending you're in a different country. So your internet activity is logged by your internet service provider. So even if you're using incognito mode, all of your financial details, your passwords, everything's being logged by your internet service provider. Sometimes they sell your information to advertisers, but when you're using a VPN, the connection between your computer and the internet becomes encrypted. It hides your IP address. It hides all of your activity. So nobody can spy on you and nobody can snoop on you. Now, I will not connect to public Wi-Fi anymore unless I'm using a VPN to protect my data, protect the connection, because you don't know how secure that Wi-Fi is. You don't know who else is using that connection. There may be hackers there taking advantage of Wi-Fi with very weak security. Now, of course, nothing this good is ever free, but using code Allen and following the link in the description below, you can get 70% off. It works out at £2.68 a month, which is it's less than a coffee a month. And personally, I think it's a really small price to pay for that sense of security and privacy. So follow the link in the video description down below. Use code Allen and you can get 70% off NordVPN. Now, in Stellarium, I'm just going to find out where exactly Kemble's Cascade is, just so I can find it easier. Uh, if I use the search window, I can just type in Kemble's Cascade, and there it is. That centers Stellarium, so I need to zoom in. And there it is. That there is Kemble's Cascade. I wonder if it's got the name. No, but that there is the Jolly Roger cluster. With this. <laughs> Some of these clusters in Nebula have the most amazing names. The Jolly Roger cluster, that's awesome. But that is Camel's Cascade. I'm just going to select this here so I can see where it is. And then zooming out, you can see that it's in the northwest west at the start of the night. And to locate it, I'm going to use Cassiopeia. I know Cassiopeia really well. Uh, and it's made of very bright stars, so it's very obvious. And it makes a W for Wallace, who is one of the best constellations in the sky. But if I run from, I think this is Seth or Kef, Seth, and this star here is Sagan. So this distance here, same direction, just double that distance, should take me to Kemble's Cascade. So double that distance. And then it's kind of equidistant with Capella, Seth. So that can kind of help me locate it in the sky. And then I can look for the stars of Camelopardalis, which, by the way, is a giraffe. <laughs> um, but the stars are very faint, so um, it might be difficult to use these stars to locate it. But I'm just going to double the distance from Cassiopeia, and that should get me there. Don't worry about that satellite there. 
Now the other thing I can do is um, plan what focal length I'm going to use. So if you use these tools at the top here, um, you can put your telescopes in. But what I basically do is just enter a focal length of a lens that I have. So you'll see I've got my Samyang 135, my old Tamron lens, Sony 400mm. You can just type in the focal length of uh, your lenses basically and then using this one here and so yeah I'm on the do, 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 oh that's on a crop sensor Canon so I need to change that to Sony a7 III okay yeah so Sony a7 III using my Sony 400 mil you can see that it's not bad it's quite big it's taking up sort of 50 percent of the frame in terms of length so I'm definitely going to go with my 100 to 400 and I'm going to shoot at 400 so that should be that should be quite nice so without further ado let's go outside We can just about see Cassiopeia. There's a lot of light pollution in that direction and seems to be a little bit of mist, a little bit of haze tonight. I'm trying to keep it quiet because the neighbors are sleeping. Now, I can't do the star hopping as well as I would have liked because I can barely see Cassiopeia, but the good thing about photographing with a zoom lens rather than a telescope is that I can start at 100, center my target and then Zoom in that way. Okay, this was way harder than I expected it to be, but I've just found where I am on Stellarium. I'm just doing a little bit of star hopping, so I'm now gonna find Alpha Camelopardalis by changing the right ascension. Oh, there it is. Okay, I've got it on the edge of the frame. God, that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, guys. Sweet. All right, so I've got it centered in the frame. I'm happy with my settings. I've gone for 30 seconds, f5.6, because that's the widest my aperture goes with the 400 mil and ISO 800, try and keep it as low as possible and protect that star colour. And I've also turned on log exposure noise reduction, just to save me doing dark frames manually. I'm just going to do them in camera, save myself a little bit of time. And I might stack the images later on as well, just to get rid of a, a bit of noise as well. So yeah, I'm just going to fire that off. Okay, so whilst I'm waiting for the images to take, I'm just going to learn some stuff about Camelopardalis because it's a new constellation for me. And this is how I like to learn the constellations, like one by one. And it's nice when you have an excuse to learn about a constellation. So I know where Camelopardalis is in the sky because I've made that star hopping pattern from Cassiopeia. Um, whenever I think of Camelopardalis now, I'll remember the night that I was in my back garden. Um, and all of that stuff comes back to memory. So I've got this book, The National Audubon Society Field Guide to the Night Sky. It was recommended to me by a friend a few years ago. It's just a really good reference book. So I'm just gonna flick to Camelopardalis. So Camelopardalis, and it has a little thing for pronunciation. The translation is the giraffe. It tells you where it is, history and mythology. Camelopardalis, a modern constellation in the far northern sky, was created to fill a vast region of faint stars surrounded by the brighter and more famous constellations of Ursa Major, 
Origa, Perseus, Cassiopeia, and others. An old form of the name Camelopardus can still be seen on some star maps. The camel leopard was so named by the Greeks because they thought a giraffe had the head of a camel and the spots of a leopard. <laughs> wow. And there's a lot of other information there about the stars and the clusters and the galaxies within that constellation as well. So really cool little reference book. I really like it. And there's, um, you know, little maps for, for every constellation as well. Anyway, I might check on the images. Okay guys, so I took um, 16 images stacked them in sequitur for noise reduction and then took the image into photoshop did a little bit of editing fixed like the color cast and got the white balance proper set the black point and um mm. It's just a bit of shit. <laughs> I was kind of expecting the... You can see Campbell's Cascades there. I was kind of expecting it to stand out a lot more compared to the other stars, but it really doesn't. And you can see the Jolly Roger cluster quite nicely there. But it just doesn't pop out. And I've even done some star reduction like on the outside of Campbell's Cascade and it just... It still just doesn't have that punch that I was expecting, so bit of an anticlimactic end into this vlog. But I'm definitely gonna post it because the whole reason I started these vlogs was to share the adventure, share some knowledge, learn some stuff, and also share the failures. I think people on social media and YouTube create this idea that everything they do is perfect and amazing and everything goes well but it's really not the case I mean I'm sure there's plenty of you watching this video right now who go through these moments where your images just don't even reach any sort of expectations but I've learned a lot today it's been really fun and obviously the more you use your gear and get used to things like star hopping it's all good practice and i'm definitely gonna try it again maybe for some darker skies and i think i'm gonna use my star glow filter next time hopefully to make the stars pop a little bit now i know i teased the star glow filter many many months ago and nothing happened we had a huge setback from china basically the chinese government banned one of the chemicals that we were using to make the filters so it was a huge setback but things are back on track guys and i don't want to say too much now just in case things take another setback but hopefully the star glow filter will be here soon guys and hopefully that will help the next time i photograph kemble's cascade anyways guys i hope you've still enjoyed this vlog make sure to come and follow me over on Instagram hit subscribe if you haven't already. I'm so close to 50,000 subscribers And I'll be doing a giveaway to celebrate the 50,000 mark with some really exciting prizes So stay tuned for that and if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies